And welcome to ETFN. It's at CNBC.com. <laughs> your go-to place for everything exchange traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. Today, we're going to be talking about fixed income. Of course, interest rates have been very well behaved in the last month. The issue is, will they continue to be very well behaved? That's the big question here. Let's talk with our guest today. John Hollier is the global head of Vanguard Fixed Income Group. Dave Nodick is the CIO and director of research of ETF Trends and, of course, an old friend of those of us here at ETF Edge. Uh, John, you oversee the management of, uh, what, $2 trillion in fixed income assets over at Vanguard. Ten-year yields have been very well behaved in the last month or so. That's a major reason why the Markets have been rallying here. Will it stay that way? What's your thoughts on where yields are going to be for the rest of the year? Hi, Bob. Our outlook is that yields will probably rise somewhat in the 10-year note, probably towards 2% in response to the reopening of the economy and the effectiveness of vaccinations, strong fiscal policy that's being implemented. We don't expect it to go much higher than that. We really don't see inflation emerging as a major threat, and we think the Fed will continue to demonstrate the patience they've shown so far before tapering or tightening. Yeah, you know, Dave, uh, you and I have had this discussion before about bonds and what's the appropriate place in somebody's uh, portfolio uh, and whether investors should even be in a lot of bonds right now. Um, what are the issues that you've got with owning, owning bonds right now? And, and John, maybe you can jump in and, and weigh in too, of course. Well, well, when we talk to advisors, what we hear overwhelmingly is they don't really want to own bonds at all right now if they can help it. And if you look at where the flows have been in ETFs this year, investors are voting that way with their pocketbooks. We've seen about $240 billion flow into equities, only uh, you know a fraction of that flowing into the bond space, about $59 billion flowing into bonds. And, and if you look at what people are doing in their equity portfolios, it looks like the rotation we would normally expect into a risk offset of trade, it's just missing that core treasury allocation. And advisors just tell me flat out, they just don't think they're getting paid to take any risk, much less the duration risk that seems to be baked in to anything beyond the, say, two years in the curve. So I'd love to get your thoughts on that, John. Like, do you really think that there's opportunity for people making new allocations into the longer end of the bond curve right now? Is that a smart move? So no doubt yields yeah. are low. John, what do you say about that? Yeah, I think, you know, there's no doubt yields are low, but they have adjusted upward a fair amount this year already. If we look at high-quality corporate bonds, which I think do a good job diversifying a portfolio, yields in the intermediate sector above 2%. It's not going to uh, make or break a portfolio, but it is a good source of diversification and in income. Um, we would say that a balanced portfolio with some holdings and bonds is going to achieve some better efficiency in light of potential for equity volatility. Now, long-term treasury bonds, true, where there's less income and a lot more duration risk, maybe there's a reason for more caution there. Yeah, it certainly seems the main reason to own bonds right now certainly is the tamp down potential volatility. That I get. But I, I understand Dave's point. 